episode zero of Week in WordPress. This is zero because this is the first one ever. We struggled uh, through figuring out Google Plus, Google Hangouts, and all this fun stuff, but we invite you to come back every week to talk about some of the headlines in WordPress. Uh, joined by my co-host Scott Souza and two powerhouses in the industry, Curtis McHale and Jason Coleman. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Let's try that again. Guys, welcome to the show. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> there it is. Uh, so this is the show where we uh, rifle through some of the WordPress headlines uh, that's making the news around the globe today. Uh, Scott, what do we got for headline number one? All right, headline number one. iThemes enters into the e-commerce scene. Um, basically, they're coming out with their uh, own version of an e-commerce plugin. Uh, it's going to be called Exchange. Uh, they have three goals. Um, first one, to make e-commerce easier and simple. Second one, to inspire entrepreneurs to sell their work on the web. And third, to partner with you. Um, guys, have any thoughts on this? Has anyone... Got seen it or used it yet? Is it still vaporware or? Yeah, I mean, I, I have. Nice. Yeah, okay. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, obviously. So obviously, the thoughts are, wow, another massive, uh, uh, you know, plugin company coming in and, and doing it, uh, doing an e-commerce plugin up against WooCommerce, which is, you know, really the juggernaut right now. Um, Corey's an awesome guy. Corey is super ambitious, so it's gonna be great to see what comes about from yeah. this. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to see what happens too. I remember at um, Pressnomics in November, I chatted with Corey a bit, and I remember him kind of drilling me, um, like I was almost uncomfortable at one point, like about e-commerce <laughs> and my membership plugin. Um, so it kind of makes a little bit more sense that he was, you know, working on that because he'd say things like, "Yeah, that's a really interesting space." <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd, I'd imagine that they were at least, you know, working on it or at least thinking about it back then in November. So. There must be something there, but um, I reserve some judgment until you know it's out in the wild and we can play with it. Because I don't, there's definitely room to uh, make things easier, and I think like kind of niche e-commerce, like different people selling different types of things. You know, there's there's some room for improvement there to like really streamline a certain kind of selling. Um, but like another e-commerce plugin that's like semi-open, you know, controlled by a business isn't going to shake things up too much, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Curse, yeah, I wonder one? when I'm going to find time for it to work on it, right? Because I actually contribute sort of regularly to uh, WP e-commerce, and I've done a bunch of projects in WooCommerce, and I've used easy digital downloads a few times as well, so I'm not sure where it's going to fit in my time. And then the one UI shot that I see looks nicer than well, many of the other ones, but mm. I don't know past that really. Yeah, do you, It's interesting. Do you, I will try it, but I'm not rushing for the beta invite. I've got lots of other things to work on and I'll, when it comes out, I will take a look. Yeah, I saw on Dradcast, Brad had said that. Uh, I think he had a little bit of insight into what's going on with this and I think it's more of a simplified version. Um, so maybe... Yeah. It's but just how simple can e-commerce get, right? Like, as soon as you start adding taxes or anything like that, you just have complexity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what and, about on the client's end? Don't, I mean, don't you think that WooCommerce, as powerful as as it is, when they see all like even the product page, that they might just feel overwhelmed with all these different options? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and that was one of the motivations for like when I made Pay Memberships Pro way back in the day was that people who are starting a membership site don't need shipping, they don't need to track orders, they don't need a shopping cart, they usually don't need to you know, monitor taxes. And so with a traditional e-commerce cart, there's all this stuff that they don't care about. So you could sell a membership as just another product in my e-commerce store, but it's really like a, a separate case. Right. Um, and it's the same thing, like easy digital downloads is another good point where it's a focused on digital downloads because it's streamlined on one type of product. Um, there's still, you know, lots of things you can do with easy digital downloads or a membership plugin, but I think, you know, the niches are gonna kind of be where it's at to, in terms of ease of use for, for end users. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's just interesting to see. It's just good. Like, like they were saying that the, the, the person who wins in the end is going to be the customer, uh, you know, looking for another option or looking for an option that fits them. I mean, cause so much of it comes down to, does this plugin work for what I need it to do? Yeah. Um, and does it make sense for me? I think, 
I think even more than that, though, when you look at WooCommerce and when I, when I need to find extensions or something, I can tell clients, look through all this stuff and just figure out what you think you might need and we can talk about it. When you're looking at WP e-commerce, it's like you just got to search randomly, basically, to find things that work that may or may not be of any quality. Right? Mm -hmm. Easy Digital Downloads also has that marketplace. So then bringing another marketplace in can make it a more viable option for clients because they're not going to look all over. And like I said, I contribute code to WP e-commerce. Mm. Yeah. One of the things I like, guys, uh, that from what I gathered anyway, um, that whole partner with you aspect, um, it seems like customers and clients and developers will, will, I think, be able to shape the product. From what I read uh, in the uh, blog post, they're going to, you know, work with developers, customers, and clients and shape it, you know, depending on the needs. So uh, that may be, you know, either good or bad. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, what do we got next, Scott? What's coming up? All right. We have ZippyKid dropping support for Wishlist member. Um, basically, they found that there was a few flaws with the plugin. Um, I'll run through them here. Uh, as far as performance goes, around about 20,000 members or so and 100 concurrent sessions. Um, the system starts to bog down. There are a lot of depreciated function calls. Uh, Zippy could actually refer to this as maybe either laziness or incompetence in their post. Um, it's actually impossible to see the code um, because they've encrypted it. And as far as caching, um, it doesn't work well when requests are served from multiple servers. Um, so what do you guys think about that? I didn't realize they encrypted code. I know I looked at it. I built a bunch of membership sites, never actually with the membership plugin, because they all seem to be like trickle content and stuff, as opposed to, I guess, just what I needed. But mm, encrypting yeah. code, I just wouldn't even look at it, really. Yeah, I mean, we we get tons of people who move to pay memberships pro from wish list because they want to change something or they have one issue and they can't because it's closed, you know, it's encrypted, so they can't change it themselves. And supposedly, like the support is not very responsive to to that kind of request. So um, I was, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised that, uh, you know, to have a host do this because, you know, all those things are true. It, it definitely, um, caching is hard in general for membership sites and, and in particular a site that you can't even go in and try to optimize, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that and they, I think they just came out with a newer version um, and they also put out a, a customer support or a uh, support desk piece of software as well. Okay. Uh, Stu, Stu McLaren, I think, is the founder's yeah. name. Um, and it's just crazy because, I mean, Jason, you probably know this, I, I think they have like 40,000 customers. Um, you know, and, and one of our other topics that, we'll get, topics that we'll get to later is like, does business belong in WordPress and, and people are afraid of the snake oil stuff. I mean, I guess it's just as bad if you're creating product that is, you know, using legacy code from WordPress to version two um, and you're out there touting it and, and marketing it and blasting it and you know getting all these all this business coming in uh, at the same time you're not taking care of that plugin and your customers don't know it because yeah. I'd imagine that these customers that are um, buying into this stuff they're more marketer centric I'd imagine mm -hmm. um, not really looking at the code they don't care they just need a, a membership site to run um, you know so I guess it's good on on zippy kid for doing this will we see more of this coming down the pipe, especially as WordPress grows. Um, you know, what What are the alternatives to a membership site, uh, membership site uh, from Wishlist <laughs> member? I really don't know anybody, especially on this call, who might, <laughs> no, I, might I have heard of anything. Yeah. It might be an alternative. Hmm. Yeah, this actually, it reminds me of um, a couple weeks ago, there was some, you know, press and flack for uh, some of the big themes that are sold in, like, Theme Forest that have, like, a million dollars in sales. But if you ask any you know, hardcore WordPress theme designer, they'd be like, that theme is terrible. It has mm -hmm. all kinds of junk. The performance is bad. It does everything wrong. It's hard to customize. And yet the end customer who doesn't know any of this, you know, finds some value in it. And that's the only reason, you know, they've been able to sell so much. So there is, I mean, definitely, you know, there's, there's truth to like what the, what our WordPress peeps are saying about, you know, wish lists and, and these themes that are kind of coded poorly. But at the same time, like their customer and their focus is on, you know, just serving the needs of their customers, and they do that well enough, you know, mm -hmm. to make money. There's definitely we get the dissatisfied customers and and help them out. Um, 
but they're, they're doing something right. And the, the other point I want to make around that is I, I, I don't know, I haven't talked to Stu, I don't know him that well, but I get the sense that, you know, he's not so much interested in like, you know, supporting the WordPress community as much as he is in supporting the business owners he's signing up. And so um, I was, there was kind of some rumors like a couple of years ago that uh, Mullenweg and the WordPress Foundation were trying to convince him to like, you know, make his plugin open source and kind of legitimize it. And I was, I was kind of worried about that first, like, you know, easy digital downloads or my plugin was available, like why not champion one of the plugins that's doing it right, right now. Um, but it, it didn't, they've had, you know, a couple of years to do that and they haven't. And I, I think they're, they're probably more likely to build their own, you know, platform or, or something else. Like WordPress is just a means to an end, you know, for their customers. It's not yeah. as important as we find it. Well, well, Stu's not a, a, a technical founder, right? He's, he's a, he's more of a business guy. Um, I've listened to his few, few of his interviews and he isn't technical. So he hired people and it kind of just grew and all of a sudden he had this, you know, pretty good sized business. Mm. Which begs the question, should these businesses in the WordPress space, you know, should they, should we hold the feet to their fire and say, you, you know, you have to give back to the community. You have to be a good standing member of our community. You should be doing open source. I mean, I mean, should, should we make these businesses do this or should that be the way that businesses run uh, in WordPress? Well, I wonder if that's going to happen eventually, just right as their clients get big enough that they start to need custom development, right? Like... They were talking about, was it 20,000, uh, I forget, 20,000 users and 100 concurrent sessions. That's not really a tiny site. So I wonder, I would wonder if you could compare that to other membership sites that have the same size and what was the same performance. If there's, you know, a marked difference, then fine. If there's nothing else to compare it against, then maybe that's just a problem at that scale anyways. Yeah. Um, mm. But I, yeah, I think it'll just continually happen that they'll get their, like, their feet to the fire. And maybe, Jason, you know, do you have other sites that are... Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's a few sites with tens of thousands of users, and I'd imagine you know a bunch of like one's a radio station, and so they definitely when the show is on, I'm sure their website is hit. And, yeah, um, yeah, so but, it's it's yeah. pretty close, right? It's in the same order of magnitude, at least. Yeah, That's, yeah, okay. and there's there's you have to do some stuff to to get that to work, um, and we've definitely found you, there's been along the development of paid memberships pro like. Um, performance issues at that level. I had never been able to test it, but you know, some of these customers are coming back and saying this report is really slow, this page load is really slow, and we figure out ways to optimize it. Like we're working with the people using the plugin yeah. um, to make it work. And one thing I want to mention too, guys, um, we'll see what comes of this, but I saw in the comments on WP Daily, um, Vid from Zippy Kid said that uh, the founder of Wishlist spoke out to him and he's waiting on results. Uh, if there's going to be any, we'll see. But yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, that might be their callback to actually contributing to the community and being more open, right? Yeah, could be. Yes, because they've got some plugins nipping at their heels. I think like uh, Easy Digital Downloads, which just passed one hundred thousand downloads. Yes, one hundred thousand right. club, Scott. What do we got coming up? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice segue into our next topic. Hundred thousand club. We have two. <laughs> different mentions today. Uh, first is Pippin's Easy Digital Downloads. That's a plugin for WordPress. Helps you manage digital downloads uh, and it is easy. Um, the second one is a more of a service, uh, Infinite WP. Uh, able to manage you know multiple WordPress sites through it. Um, they hit 100,000 uh, WordPress sites uh, on their service, and I think it's interesting to note that back in January they were at fifty thousand, so and pretty good growth, I think. Yeah, over the course of six months. So where do we go? I mean, there's tons of plugins, tons of services coming about that even we don't even know about um, that we're constantly seeing. Uh, Jason, your your plugin is uh, has already surpassed a hundred thousand, right? No, no, we're um around forty six thousand downloads. Okay, forty six thousand. I thought I thought you were, I thought you were in the hundred k club as well. Um, but still, that's a still a, a massive amount of of downloads. I mean, are, are we still going to see these things growing? Are we still going to see uh, this massive hockey stick up into the right growth? Um, you know, for the next couple of years, for the next year. I mean, it, do we see any end to any of this uh, amazing growth that we're that we're experiencing right now? I mean, like the Word, WordPress sites in general, I see still, and it's kind of tied together, right? As these plugins are created and these services are created, it makes WordPress more attractive to build certain kinds of sites on. Um, so, 
Yeah, we're like riding a wave of people building websites in general and using mm. WordPress, you know, is going up. It, it, it may slow down a bit, but, um, you know, I expect it to keep going for sure. Yeah, I mean, it just... It's... Well, even if development on WordPress stopped today, right, there'd be a long trickle of work still to get done and people still buying stuff because it is so popular. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I agree. I mean, we're at like what seventeen percent. We're at like seventeen percent of uh, the internet's content yeah, management system. Like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's seventeen percent, like the internet in general. And yeah. For CMSs, it's you know over fifty percent. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's going to keep going. It's going to be pretty amazing to see. Like even when we talk about iThemes releasing uh, Exchange, I mean, everyone's coming up with their own their own ecosystem um, of of you know little little plugins, either the plugins free, and then you've got all these extensions, or you've got themes with e-commerce uh, and other plugins that Woo does. Um, yeah, I, I just think that uh, we'll continue to see that growth, and it's going to be interesting to see where we're at in a year from now. Um, people hitting millions of downloads and and building out. And there's their, already uh, a few though, right? Like WP Touch has are they hit a million or three million or something? Yeah, just they're like yeah, a few weeks back. Yep, it's so. crazy. I, I think the easy digital downloads one is is pretty impressive because it's um, it's not something that like everyone who uses WordPress uses. So most of the plugins that are you know over a hundred thousand in the millions of downloads, you know, are either really really old, but also, you know, almost everyone wants to cache improved performance on their site. Everyone, you know, everyone wants a Facebook button on their site. Everyone wants um, a Twitter button on their site. So you know, if you're going for just like number of downloads, you know, you got to think like what kind of plugin does everyone need to install? Everyone needs a Google sitemap, you know, so that plugin, you know, takes off. And so, um, but I don't know what percentage of sites are membership sites, like maybe I should know, but it, it's, you know, it's less than half. And so it's kind of interesting. I like, to me, it's more impressive that he has. Yeah, no, super valid point. And, and, and look, I mean, you, you guys know, uh, better than I. I mean, he starting out as a one man shop, and and he and he does still have have a few people working for him, but still, it's an amazing, amazing achievement for for him to uh, to surpass. Mm -hmm. A lot of hard work. Yeah, a lot of hard work to get there. Definitely. Um, Dreamhost. Dreamhost. That's right. They announced this week a service called DreamPress, and what that is is optimized, or as they say, highly optimized WordPress uh, hosting platform. Uh, they offer memory caching, automatic core updates, um, and I believe that I, you know, it'll help innovate. And I think Matt might share the same opinion: um, innovate and motivate other hosting providers. Um, you know, and, and as we know, sometimes competition drives the innovation. Um, so we'll see what comes of this. But uh, I think it's starting out at twenty four ninety five a month. But they're running an introductory um, p a plan right now for nineteen ninety five. Yeah. Um, hey, I mean, just another just another managed WordPress host thrown into the ring. Um, I really like the the kind of. Controversy that that Saddington sparked on WP Daily by posting the uh, insider trading kind of tip off uh, <laughs> you know, with uh, with the co-founder of DreamHost investing in WP Engine. Of course, that was uh, squashed uh, over the course of the day with both sides of the both sides of the fence chiming in. Um, you know, same thing. Like I'm looking back. You know, from you guys are in this. You guys are building businesses like this. I'm looking at it from the third party, third person view. Is how much more, uh, how many more specific work, managed WordPress hostings providers can we get? When will the price, when will we start to see them just competing on price versus value and features? Um, well, I even looked at the Dream Press and thought that the pricing was a little high compared to some of the other things like WP Engine at, uh, I don't know, let's say in the 60s, which is more, but that gives you 10 sites plus a multi site if you want, and your multi site can run my collection as much as you want and like their lowest plan was or pages lowest plan is like nine dollars a month mm -hmm. so I like I've been trying to put my clients on pagely because I don't have to worry about updates and and they don't have to worry about updates either but I don't like selling them at 29 is or 24 is a lot more than selling them at nine right yeah yeah that's right what do, what do your what do your clients say Curtis when they're when they're like hey 30 bucks for hosting Jesus I got six dollars for for GoDaddy uh, well, I say, well, you need to find someone else for GoDaddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You know, at 30, I just think they'd say no, yeah. right? So I don't remember to say WP Engine's high-end price, or sorry, lower price. I think it's $19, their lower price, their lowest tier. But yeah, I don't know. $9 clients that I've had are just, it's just 9 bucks. It's not that big a deal when I say, yeah. like, you save all this time. You don't have to worry about updates. They're going to keep that going. It's going to be cash, and you're not going to have to pay me to... You know, go through and configure your server and configure your site and set up Nginx and all the mm. W3 total cache and everything and you save you know, easily a year or your two or three years worth of hosting just in kind of the extra setup oh. stuff. Mm. I, mean, I was just that $9 for Pagely sounded like a really good deal so I double checked their pricing. I see a $24 level. Oh, is it? Um, I could have been wrong. It's been... They, been every once in a while they do like buy it at half price forever. Um, so oh. I don't know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. It is twenty four. What's W? Maybe it was WP Engine then that had the nine. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just out to lunch. That's. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, in general, um, yeah, our clients are so adverse to paying a hosting fee. Like they'll pay thousands of dollars to start a site, and then we say pay thirty dollars a month instead of ten dollars a month. They're like, whoa, 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 let's talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and no, I was wrong on all counts. I think no one is nine bucks, so I'm out to lunch. Yeah, oh, you were... kid, they're solo. But we it is starting at twenty five. Yeah. Um, we 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 host like uh, sites for some of our clients just to make it easy for us to develop. Um, and I haven't done it yet, but like I think about having like a GoDaddy tax for people who host on GoDaddy because it like literally everything takes you know twice as long because you're you're struggling with the configuration and the slow load times and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, unless they have like a dedicated GoDaddy server, then it does okay. But um, you know, I want to work with you know Pagely and WP Engine. We've been referring some people over there, um, but even then, like you know, it, we need like a because people are adverse to paying so much money per month. You know, you need someone um, who is at that price point. I and personally, I think you know twenty four dollars a month, even ninety nine dollars a month for your website is you know kind of what you should expect. Yeah, you know. Considering the value that people get out of a website, it's like a. Like you, we have clients who will pay, you know, three thousand dollars to be on a billboard for a couple of weeks, but they mm-hmm. don't want to pay three thousand dollars to host their website that's online twenty four seven for an entire year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and that billboard sends people to a site that loads in ten seconds or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Six dollar right. hosting, and they're like, "Yeah, we're totally getting lots of people that come, and their bounce rate is you know ninety eight percent seconds yeah, yeah, on the site." Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just crazy that, well, not crazy, but it's just interesting to see, hey, you know, just when you think that no one else can step into the to the managed hosting realm, uh, you know, Dream has, DreamHost putting in their, good, putting in their bid, it's, it's good to see. But again, we're, we're seeing continued growth, and that's what I like. Yeah, and, and I'm a fan of Pagely and WP Engine, um, ZipiKit, the WordPress-specific hosts, and coming from the WordPress community, I'm rooting for them, but I'm really, you know, wondering, like, what's taken the big host so long mm-hmm. to do something like this? Um, and so having Dream Host, um, and hopefully, you know, some of the other hosts will fall, you know, fall in line. I think you, the more the merrier in this space to kind of, um, yeah. the better options. Because hosting a WordPress site, you really kind of optimize it, and it's kind of a different beast. Than yeah. yeah. All right, next up, Scott. Moving on. Um, does business belong Does business belong at WordCamps? Um, Matt and I were talking about this yesterday, and, um, you know, we, we kind of discussed a little bit, like, people want it, so, you know, why wouldn't it be allowed at uh, WordCamps? But I, I think I'll let Matt kind of uh, give an overview of, of this topic. Yeah, uh, another great uh, sparked piece by John Saddington over at WP Daily. Uh, you know, is is WordPress uh, amateur hour for business? And uh, you know, I think I think uh, what we saw from that was two sides. Everyone saying, "Yeah, this is great. Everyone loves to see it." Um, and then you've you've got somebody more seasoned, more aged in the the larger business side of things, like Jake from Ten Up, uh, chiming He's called in. Called them all day. <laughs> <laughs> you said. Uh, uh, chiming in on you know you know his thoughts of it and and how he feels that it shouldn't be included in a WordCamp. Um, you know, and, and I'm supposed to sit down with him next week to talk about this uh, on my show, but it's something that, you know, to me it's like, well, well why wouldn't people, you know, want to sit down and, and learn these things? I know I wanted to learn these things when I was first started going to WordCamps. Um, and look, the, the business side of WordPress is is growing. That's pretty much what all these headlines were about today. Uh, this, this week was more growth, more businesses being uh, spun up. 
more plugins being launched. Uh, you know, business is, is really still growing. What do you guys think? I think you need to look at like where Jake is. Jake runs a big agency. I actually used to work for that agency. I guess it's a year and a half ago or something. I worked for him for three months. Um, and then looking at, you know, me talking, say even me talking about business, I get some large clients for significant sums for like a single freelancer, but it's a different, right? I'm a step farther ahead than many people, but I would say Jake is looking at building an agency. Jake is many steps farther ahead than me in building an agency. So while for Jake, it might seem amateur hour, but this person that's got three or four employees, that's more employees than I have, right? I got a dog behind me that you can't see because it's too dark and she's brown, right? That's it. That's my employees. You know, I pay my wife to do my books a little bit and that's it. So I can learn something from someone who has transitioned into a couple employees that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, if Jake is trying to sell WordPress to Enterprise, having someone from Enterprise see something like that hurts him, right, in what he's trying to do. Um, but like we, you know, most people have, have said is that, you know, those people giving the talks a lot of times still have something to give to the people who are went wrong below them. Um, and kind of, you know, I think Mullenweg chimed in at one point saying we're all amateurs. And, and that's really true. And that's kind of the beauty of WordPress and why it's on 17% of the whole internet is because it's accessible to the amateurs and it is amateur hour, you know, in the good mm -hmm. sense. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like the idea that we, we should vet and have better speakers and can we kick our speakers up a notch is a good idea. But you know, we could still have business at, at WordCamp, um, I think. Um, yeah. But Jake made a good point, too, about, you know, the, it, it's weird, like, there's a business track. You know, a lot of the stuff to teach people about business isn't WordPress-specific. You should go find a mentor at your local business college and all this stuff. It would be a better resource for you guys who are trying to look for stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but that said, like, we, there is demand for this, so let's give some demand. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it is de it's definitely interesting. Um, it's gonna be interesting to sit down and talk to him about it. But and it's funny because this article came out on the heels of me watching a uh, WordCamp TV uh, video about a guy who did business track, and uh, it was you know he started off with I'm a certified business coach, and then immediately I was just like I'm done, <laughs> like certified <laughs> business coach. Here we go, right? And you know, and then he said you gotta make the value about the customer. It's all about the client and spend your time with the client, and then he says, but before we continue, let me tell you a little bit more about me. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, like, people, have we, have we not tuned off yet from this guy? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see that thing. I can see that problem happening um, because, uh, I don't know how to put it, but because uh, the low barrier to entry to WordPress, I think a lot of folks are now seeing this, seeing the target of WordPress, right? So now, that, where, where, where do all these WordPress people go? Oh, they go to these WordCamps. And it's 20 bucks to get in, and I can speak for free because they need content. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can see that uh, organizers having to vet as best they can because it's not an easy job uh, to, to organize an event like that. Um, yeah, but it's even hard to get speakers sometimes, right? right? I know I spoke out in Edmonton two years ago now, and I put in two topics, figuring I'd get one, and then they picked one, and they gave me a week later and said, ah, can you speak on the second one too? Because <laughs> they just couldn't get anyone. Now, that was their first one, right? Yeah. But it can be hard to to get people. Yeah. So and every time I hear those business people, I always think of a book called Getting Naked, which is about business consulting and how like when you're like to build a business, it should be should be all about the customer and they go in basically not even knowing. They don't go in with a prepared report when they pitch to people. It's they go in with like their notepad and just sit there and ask questions for two hours and then you know, sell them on three times as much money as the guy that was in before them because right. they actually invested in it. So I agree. Yeah. I'd totally turn off that video on that business guy. <laughs> Very hard for me to continue to watch that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, and I, I see his point, and I want to get your thoughts on, on this because you guys are both uh, engaged with some higher-end stuff. I mean, I was on a phone call with somebody the other day or a couple weeks ago, and we were working f to pitch a client, and, you know, they were like, hey, we, we only do stuff for, like, Fortune 20 companies, and our company does, you know, billions of dollars in revenue, uh, if if we were if I were to bring this back to the board and tell them that we're picking WordPress, they'd fire me because they're like WordPress is just a blogging system, just a blogging platform. You know, and we have all the stats. You know, here's here's how much it powers. Here's the biggest sites that are using it, uh, and people are up in that corporate uh, level that Jake's trying to fly at. A lot of them are still saying that 
hey, this is we're not going to use this. What is this? This is a blogging platform. This makes no sense for us. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people aren't addressing it properly in, in many instances, though. They're not addressing, like, total cost of ownership, right? Training. We'll build you a custom system for a hundred grand, but then you're totally on your own. When it breaks, you just have to pay someone again, right? As opposed to, Very you know, true. there's a community, and yes, you're going to pay a developer to help you find that solution, but it doesn't have to be all on them or all on this agency that may or may not die, right? right. There's a couple big agencies like 10 Up, uh, thinking of Brad's, what's Brad's name, right? What's his agency What's name? Agency? That's the right, right? There's that, those two at the very least that can do it. But even there's a, you know, a bunch of individual developers that could take on something like 10UP has, right? They'd only take on one project, but yeah. I, I think um, there's, there's a shallow image piece of this that's always going to be there. Like if you drive a, uh, an Audi, you don't want to know that like the Jetta is the same exact car <laughs> with only you know two inches less wheel span or whatever the difference is. Like if it was, you, you want the Jetta to be called the Volkswagen so that when you drive your Audi, it feels like something you know more expensive and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's the same way with WordPress. Like no matter how much we can try to convince people logically that WordPress is a good solution in the enterprise, just in their mind they're gonna be like, this is like you, you know, so and so has their pet blog on WordPress, and I'm gonna have my enterprise solution on, Word, on WordPress, the same name, same code. And it, it just makes them feel dirty, uh, and you can't you can't really talk around that. Like over time, all of us who grew up, we're going to be see you know CTOs of companies and we'll decide to use WordPress. So if you give it time, it'll happen maybe, or you know um, maybe you know there needs to be like a fork of WordPress, just like WordPress Enterprise, and you know Ooh, sunrise. Oh, you, know. you are bringing up the death uh -oh. right there. Someone was working on that, and it's called Sunrise. What's his name? Mike. All right. Or I don't remember Mike's last name. Yeah, I'd have to look it up again. But yeah, he was working on it. I know I talked to him last year a bit, a, a bit about it before it was out. But it's and, out I mean, it's... yeah, the secret me is it doesn't have to be that different. Just like you know, your Audi, Volkswagen, uh, Toyota, Lexus, whatever. It just you know, different in name and, and something that you could you could package to people a little nicer it might help go a long way. Yeah. The thing I always remember, and I teach the financial courses, that most people who are driving those Audis and those high-end cars are in debt up to the hilt and have <laughs> no actual money. And the people that are driving those Jettas that are old, it's your average millionaire in the U.S. and in Canada is driving a Jetta that's two years old. <laughs> right? <you> so <laughs> it's a total cost of ownership. They can't afford to lose 60% of the depreciation on that. Same with when you're in that custom CMS that only got built for you. You can't, right? then you're spending all this money, not making money, but just maintaining something mm. that you shouldn't have to do, right? As opposed to the community at large, maintaining it. So when you can afford to, you know, drop $40,000, $100,000 a year to maintain something that you shouldn't have to, by all means, go waste your money. Yeah. Although my bank account needs some money, so I'll take that. <laughs> uh, the, and I think the other thing, too, when he's flying, when you're flying at that corporate level, they, those guys, they... They've got the money to spend. They want to buy. They can buy whatever they want to buy. But it's just that like plausible deniability. Like, hey, I, I picked the best that mm. the comp the competitor is using. You know. So if when they get in front of the boardroom, they say, well, "Why did you pick that platform to build the site?" They can just say, "Hey, I picked the best. I paid the most money. That's yeah. what you know the Lehman Brothers were using. <laughs> uh, you know, and you know, so they're they're they get to to say uh, they get to fly uh, safe with that. And hey, if that's the game that Jake's playing every day. God bless him, because I, I, I certainly <laughs> no. wouldn't want to have to be in those boardrooms. And they do like a that. good job. Jake is a smart guy. Yeah. Like said. Yep, smart guy. Yeah. Good uh, discussion. Good discussion, the, guys. You know, and, and and hey, WordPress is only ten years old. Everybody, and it's That's, not easy. Imagine what America was like after ten years of signing freedom. Right? Not easy. <laughs> Hmm. That is correct. WordPress turned 10, uh, I believe it was May 27th, so a little bit more than a week ago, but uh, we figured we'd include it anyway. Um, just a couple of quick little stats that I found. Uh, one, uh, version 1.2 saw about 800 downloads a day, whereas 3.5.1, which is the most current version, uh, saw about 145,000 a day, uh, downloads a day. So I think that's uh, considerable growth. Um, and I, I think, my personal opinion is I think that it'll, you know, continue to evolve over the next 10 years uh, moving forward. And we'll see what, what happens because how much more can it actually evolve, um, you know. I think that's, uh, what do you guys think about that? 
Well, I'm kind of bummed that I missed some of these killer parties that were going on. I was on a family vacation, so I wasn't bummed about that, but I didn't partake in any of the festivities. <laughs> sounded like. Yeah, I, I mean, like like you were bringing up before, like the whole forking and, and coming up with new, you know, new packaging, if you will, for WordPress. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, where it goes with any kind of content publishing platform. What's the other one? Uh, by John Nolan, Ghost? Ghost, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it's ten years old. It's trying to solve everybody's problems, but now you're now you're getting these usability issues where it's now it's hey, it's too heavy. It's not a blogging platform anymore, or it's just a blogging platform. It's not you know robust enough. I don't know. I think we're in some interesting times. I think we get some real growing pains ahead of us, but for the good. Yeah, for the good of it all. Um. I think we'll skip the iOS one. WordPress for iOS gets a facelift. Yeehaw, I'm an Android user. We're all Android users. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, this last uh, interesting headline came through. The WordPress 3.6 Heartbeat API. My brain has melted. What does it mean? <laughs> what does it do? Uh, so basically, its goal, uh, it's, it's being introduced in 3.6, which should be coming out very soon, I believe. Um, and it's basically to, uh, an API to create a bi-directional connection between the user and the server. Um, I guess you could think of it maybe similar to WebSockets, although when I was reading the track ticket, um, I saw a lot of Ajax polling in there, which I know is, is nothing related to WebSockets. Um, but I think um, we might be getting into some real-time stuff with this, guys, like real-time editing on the front end or actually just you know creating posts on the front end I, I know that's possible now through plugins and whatnot um, maybe some real-time collaboration there was talk about uh, you know locking a post immediately when somebody gets in there and I, I think uh, it's definitely gonna grow as you move forward uh, and I'm I'm really big on the real-time you know uh, applications so I'm very interested to see where this will go yeah I, I think this is big for uh, WordPress's future and I know that on Mullenweg's, you know, either actual or, or kind of, you know, his roadmap anyways, is using WordPress for applications, right? So not just websites, but like iOS apps and other apps, you know, the tools, you know, things of that nature. And a big part of that is the need for kind of, you know, asynchronous instant feedback um, for the websites to be more snappy and responsive. Um, and this heartbeat is a, a good, you know, first step. It's kind of, you know, the backbone, pun intended, <laughs> um, that's that's needed for, for this to be able to, you know, hook into this and build this kind of application on top of WordPress. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do worry, like, um, you know, if you look in that track ticket, there's a lot of discussion around, you know, something that WordPress does really well is it runs on, like, every single web server. Um, and this polling every second, or if you want to do certain things, you want to poll, like, microseconds, is, is can be taxing on, on different servers. Um, Definitely. And they've done a good job of making it, you know, better and people can change settings, I think, to make it, you know, not take up as much of your resources. But even Ajax polling has kind of a physical limit. Um, and I'm not super experienced with this, but I've been reading about it a bit, you know, compared to if you're running like Node.js on the server or some other kind of uh, architecture that's not, you know, Apache web page serving that's kind of meant just for serving really fast JavaScript type, you know, uh, features on, on a web page. Um, so I, did, I think this is needed, but you worry like, is it even, is like a more of an architecture uh, change needed to support the, like, you know, the future of apps on WordPress? Should WordPress be powering apps is the question that some might say. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I think so. <laughs> Um, and maybe and not all apps. And actually, this is you know, uh, Curtis. We can't hear you, buddy. <laughs> Kurt, uh, just so everybody knows, Curtis is running two mics. Okay, that's that how professional correct. he is. <laughs> He's got two mics and a cell phone, and we still can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can no, see up. <laughs> Move it around. When you did that last time, it worked. Oh man. No, oh, no. Uh, we lost them. Audio. <laughs> <laughs> Click the little gear. Click the little gear in the uh, browser. No. Huh. Just quickly, just sketch something. Win, lose, <laughs> or draw. 
<laughs> sketch I'll sketch your answer. <laughs> Oh man, this is so you too. Heartbeat API developer. Ah, oh, he wants to talk about it. Uh. <laughs> um, Do you want to take a pause and you edit this? We'll try to get him back in. No, because this is all live. People are watching this failure right now, uh. <laughs> all across the internet. Oh, man. All right. Well, Curtis, we love you, buddy. Wish you could answer any of these questions, but you can't. Uh, so that's gonna be a wrap. Uh, Jason, anything else you want to add to the headlines? Um, yeah, no, nothing new. Just de definitely, we want to see apps on WordPress, especially, you know. And Curtis says the heartbeat is totally awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I just saw that come through. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's gonna be some really cool new different things, and a lot of people will say, you know, why use WordPress, or you're just using WordPress because it's the only thing you know. Um, but in reality, the WordPress has a lot going for it in terms of building apps. Um, and you know, with this whole concept of a lean methodology that you want to build things and iterate fast and get it out there, you know, WordPress is perfect for that because mm -hmm. you, you know, a lot of times you, you think like, if I'm building an app from scratch and I have millions of dollars in funding, like sure, I start with you know the Node.js slash Ruby implementation or whatever that's perfect. Um, but a lot of times you don't. You start with just a page, just a blog, just, you know, you add Payment versus Pro and you're getting money, and then you're like, oh, now it needs to be an app. You know, so anyway, I know WordPress is great for apps. Uh, you back, Curtis? <laughs> Curtis back. doesn't seem that way. Thanks for filling the air, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone else muted me and then... Someone else muted me and unmuted me. I'm in a couple podcasts, so I always mute when I'm not talking. Not that you don't get random stuff. <laughs> Anyway, I think Heartbeat's awesome. That's it. I was actually just building something to for students to book calls with coaches, and it would be awesome for that. Because when a call, we have like 100 students trying to book all kind of in that same half-hour window, I could just take away calls that are already booked so they don't even have an opportunity to click on it, as opposed to now where they, like, I, I check to see if they're available when they click on the calendar to see the times, and then when they click on the time, i got to check again to see if it's available because another student clicked it in the meantime, then... Right, with the heartbeat API, I could take it away. I'd still have to do the other checking, but hopefully I get better visual feedback. Yeah. So, but I agree that server architecture and everything would be an issue. I guess you just wouldn't use it on, you know, some like you wouldn't necessarily use it on big sites or sorry on small sites on small servers. It's less mm -hmm. likely to be needed, right? When you're running, I say, twenty thousand members and you got to upgrade your server, fine. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. Absolutely. Awesome stuff, gentlemen. Thanks for joining the show. Uh, Curtis, since you were the first one here, where can people find you to say thanks? Uh, they can find me on my own site at curtismichael.ca or on WP Theme Tutorial, <clears throat> weekly WordPress tutorials. Very, very nice. Jason, how about you? Uh, you guys can take a look at the newly redesigned paidmembershipspro.com. Nice. And uh, I'm Jason underscore Coleman on Twitter. That's great. It's awesome. Thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, you can find our stuff, slocumstudio.com. We have four running podcasts. I think this makes five if this thing actually keeps flying. So yeah. check us out, youtube.com slash slocumstudio. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. All right. See you guys. Yeah. Yeah.